I'm Evil's Vox, and welcome back to my XSplit Masterclass, sponsored by XSplit. In the previous episode, I introduced you to the broadcaster software and its UI, and explained how this course works. Here's a hint. Check the description for time codes and links to all the full episodes for this course. I've probably answered all those questions in those videos, if you have any. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to manage your audio and video devices, audio interfaces, webcams, capture cards, the like. If you want to download XSplit for yourself, be it Gamecaster or Broadcaster, since I'm covering both, consider using my affiliate link in the description to let them know I sent you and to encourage them to keep supporting free, edu free tech education, rather, just like this. Maybe I need some free language education. Are you ready to take ultimate control over your live stream, but you're not sure how? The Elgato Stream Deck is the key to unlocking your full potential. With your choice of 6, 15, or 32 keys, all with customizable screens behind them and unlimited possibilities to nest, make folders, and pages to control your live stream with scene switching, muting your microphone, activating your Elgato key lights, and setting up multi-actions to do everything at once. Start your stream, turn on your lights, tweet your stream, you can do anything. You'd be a fool not to have this in your setup. You don't want to be a fool, do you? Check it out via the link below and tell them the stream professor sent you. First, let's talk about your audio interfaces or mixers. These will be either connected via USB, such as something like a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, the Behringer 204HD, or the GoXLR, or connected to your computer's 3.5mm line inject, such as is the case with many analog mixers, or perhaps you have a gaming headset connected directly to the mic jack on your computer or connected via USB. These will show up in your Windows sound control panel a little differently depending on your device. A USB interface or microphone will show up as Blue Yeti, Go XLR chat mic, etc. A 3.5mm analog device may just show up as something like Realtek microphone or even just microphone. Microphone. It's important that you check your Windows settings and make sure that you know what devices you're looking for and that they're set up properly before trying to set it up in XSplit Broadcasting. Thankfully, webcams and video devices are easier. They're just USB or PCIe, and they show up as the same name you'd recognize. Elgato HD60S, Logitech C920, and so on. Let's start by getting your audio sorted. We're specifically going to be addressing individual audio sources, such as your microphone and system sound. Uh, if you want to set up sounds or audio streams that only apply to specific scenes, you can use the per scene audio extension for that, which we may cover later in this video or in a later video. Not 100% sure yet. You can either do this by going to tools, settings and clicking the audio tab or by clicking the gear icon next to your audio mixer in XSplit. Here you can set up the devices for your system sound and microphone. If your devices are assigned to default in Windows, you can utilize default speakers and default microphone devices, but I highly encourage you to manage these manually. Select your speaker or headphone output that you hear your system sound from, and then also choose your microphone. If you're using a Go XLR, like I am, specifically that, you can just set your speakers to none and choose the Broadcast Stream Mix device for your microphone, which will have your entire audio mix from the Go XLR all in one device. Everyone else should just continue as normal. So here I've selected my chat mic and my system output. Next, with each device you can add a delay in milliseconds. This is useful for syncing up with capture cards. Most capture cards have an input latency. I've actually been document this, documenting this in my stream guides videos. And the output of most cameras, HDMI ports, also have a latency. So for example, my current camera and capture card setup for my primary camera back there uh, I need to set a audio delay of 50 milliseconds to match my microphone sound to my camera feed to keep everything in sync. Here you can also set a volume range. This is basically a boost option, letting you extend the volume slider for each device beyond 100% just in case one is way too quiet. You can crank that bad boy up. This would also be useful if it could go below 100% to make sure that you can lock volume so that you don't go past a certain point, but you can't do that at this time. For the microphone specifically, you can also add a noise suppressor filter here, or silence detection, which is basically a noise gate. This is set up with a threshold, how loud you have to be before the noise gate opens, and let's sound through. And the silence period, measured in milliseconds, and again, 1000 milliseconds equals one second. This is how long it waits before the, you know, after your sound opens the gate, before the gate closes back. For noisier environments, a higher threshold will be required to cut out background sound, just don't set it too high or you'll start chopping off syllables of your words, which will sound very annoying to your viewers. Play with it, test, test, and test again. 
and you'll get a nice level set together eventually. If you need to mono mix your microphone, for example, from an audio interface that only distributes your microphone on the left or right channel, this option is available as well. And this is very common for interfaces like the Scarlett 2x2 and so on. You can do that here with the drop down menu. You get to choose what, which channel is actually utilized from your device, which is nice, super handy. At the bottom, you can choose your sample rate for audio. On most modern machines, you should be sticking to 48 kilohertz, but you can leave this on auto. All the way back at the top, you also have a drop down menu for audio preview. This allows you to set an audio monitoring device to send an entire mix of your stream's sound to. This is useful for a second chair producer or for just hearing a final mix versus only your system sound to your stream. Choose which audio device you want to use here or leave it on none. Keep in mind, this does literally play back sound to your chosen audio device. So if you set it to the same device that system sound in XSplit is set to, you know, chosen below, then it will keep echo looping your sound and it will kill your ears ears and your own. And your own. Once all of your audio devices are set up, you can click apply and OK and close the window. The final step is to mix your audio's levels accordingly. Use the volume bars to set up your microphone so that it's not clipping or distorting, but it's plenty loud enough, and that your system sound is audible but isn't overbearing your microphone. This is a situation where routing an audio preview to a second pair of headphones would help you a lot so that you could hear the changes that you're making to the mix in real time and so that you can test the audio levels and you know get them sorted the best. If you can't do that or simply don't wish to do it this way, you can simply do mini test recordings, play the Mac and make sure your audio levels are balanced before going live. Always do this before you go live. You can mute your microphone or system sound by clicking the mic icon or speaker icon respectively. If this control isn't enough for you, a new audio mixer extension comes shipped with Broadcaster and can be accessed via extensions audio mixer. This new window gives you much bigger volume sliders, but also visual indicators and even a DBFS sound level measurement for each of your sources and a little more space to get you know more accurate sound mixing between your global devices. Again, you can click the mic or speaker icon to mute sources entirely. So have at it. Mix audio to your heart's content. Now you can also add individual audio devices or sources to each scene by clicking add source devices and choosing from the list of audio input devices on your system. This is helpful for utilizing multiple microphones, mixers, and so on. And then you can use the per scene audio extension and the audio mixer extension to manage these various sources more effectively between your scenes. Now, let's talk about video devices. Unlike Gamecaster, you are not limited to assigning a single camera and game source to a specific role. You can just add and manage all of your connected video devices freely, which opens the door for a lot more control and possibility with your streams. To add a video device, click Add Source at the bottom of Broadcaster. So to add screen sources from your PC directly, you can choose Smart Capture, which will help you target a specific window based on region, Window Capture to capture specific windows that are already open, or Display Capture, which will just loop in your entire monitor, or whichever monitor you select. There's also Game Capture, which will hook specific games running on your system. This will perform better than Display Capture or Window Capture for actual video games, but it won't work on you know, normal windows. To add a webcam or capture card, choose from the Devices category under Sources. Under Video, you can see I have my Elgato capture card, my Magewell USB capture card, and XSplit VCAM, which I cover later in this course. Choose and add your specific device, resize it to fit your canvas, and you're off to the races. XSplit will automatically adjust the settings of your device to be the most optimized for your stream settings as far as it you know, determines, but it does give you more control if desired. To access that, right click the new device listing in your sources to access controls and a, a, a lot of tabs here. We're going to go through them, so get ready. Here you can change the audio device assigned to your video device. You can mute it or adjust its volume levels and adjust the delay offset, offset to keep it in sync with your video. At the bottom, you can click configure to change different options. You can force deinterlacing for interlaced sources, such as 1080i camcorders. You can click video input to adjust UVC control options, such as brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and so on. This is useful for webcams mainly, although XSplit does give you these controls, which we'll show in a second. Clicking video output uh, lets you control the video resolution, color space, and frame rate of your video capture device. Again, XSplit will automatically choose what it thinks is best here, but you can tweak these as well. 
So if your capture card supports YUI2, I recommend using that when possible, although XSplit may have automatically selected that. Most webcams will only support MJPEG or H.264 at high resolutions for a decent frame rate, however. As an example of these manual settings, with the Logitech C920 specifically, you can change output size to 1280x720 or 1920x1080. Keep in mind that color space slash compression options change based on resolution. So for this webcam, for example, you can use the YUI2, an uncompressed higher quality option at the default 640x480 at 30 frames per second. But if you change resolution to 720p or 1080p, you only get five frames per second, unless you switch to the Ace Shoe 64 compression mode. This is generally fine for most people, but it does require more CPU usage to decode than YUI2 and can be of lower quality and latency. There's a trade-off to make with this. Generally speaking, if you only really want to use your webcam for a small face cam over gameplay, I'd actually recommend leaving it at a lower resolution and YUI2. But if you spend a lot of time with your webcam set to full screen and chatting with your stream, then a higher resolution output mode might be a better choice. Just keep in mind that a lot of the USB webcams have a smaller sensor than even your smartphone. So their true native resolution is lower than 720p or 1080p. So. Higher numbers does not always equal better. Logitech specifically has an integration with XSplit Broadcaster that allows you to either use the manual UVC controls for frame rate and exposure and everything like that that I just talked about and showed, or use their own integrated settings, which kind of came along with the G Hub software that I've shown off previously on my channel, in that all you have to do is specify whether you want to prioritize a, a bright, clean exposure for your webcam or a smoother frame rate, and it will kind of manage from there, which is pretty cool. Choosing audio input just gives you a few more niche controls over the audio device assigned to your capture source. There are other tabs to your video's device settings, too. There's a lot you can do here. The color tab lets you adjust dynamic range and color settings to improve or fix your image. Here you can also set up chroma or color keying for green screen setups. The layout tab lets you adjust the size and position of your source. You can crop it, you can even apply 3D transforming effects to it to angle it or position it in 3D space. This should make for some neat looking layouts. The effects tab lets you do some neat tricks with your source. Masking lets you apply a different shape mask so that you're not restricted by a rectangular frame for your video. Useful for creative setups. You can build these masks based on PNG files of custom shapes as well. Here, you can also apply a drop shadow as well. Next, you can apply filters to your video for cool color effects or blurring, or apply a custom LUT in PNG format, just like OBS, to apply more specific color grading to your source. Lastly, in this effects tab, you can actually apply per source transitions whenever you're leaving or entering a scene. This means that basically every individual video device can have a different transition effect every time you change scene. This opens the door wide open for cool scene switching and source moving. There's far more you can do here than I can cover in one video. So if you're like me and you're wondering where the heck your recordings are because I spent a little too long trying to find them and explore, you can actually quickly go to File and My Recordings or My Screenshots, depending on what you're looking for, and it will open up the window here with your recordings so that you can mess with them, the location of it, which you can change if you want to move it somewhere else, and you can just outright open the folder and explore so you have access to your recordings and your streams. Your recordings will be in the root folder of this exploit folder here, and then your actual streams, if you check automatically save to local hard drive, that'll be under Twitch or, you know, your streaming platform dash your username. So Twitch dash Ninklebot here for my stream copy, whereas this is my recorded copy. Microphone and speakers, check. Webcam, check. Capture card or PC game capture, check. With all of these covered, hopefully you're now comfortable managing your audio and video devices in XSplit Broadcaster and you're ready to move on to our next video, tackling streaming and recording settings. Available in the playlist, link in the video description below. Down there. While you're down there, hit subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. Also hit that like button, you know, the one with the thumbs up. Not the thumbs down, although if you want to. Thumbs up. Consider this sharing this course with a friend if they want to learn how to stream. I'm Evos Vox, your stream professor. I'll see you next time. You better be streaming. I keep clapping. You're not supposed to clap in videos. <laughs>